Palo Alto Networks is protecting more than 80,000 companies worldwide, millions and millions of people, which makes us a top target for cyber attacks. My name is David Sabo, and join me in this discovery series to explore how the Palo Alto Security Operations team is protecting our company, our people, and learn how we do it. Welcome to This is How We Do It, a discovery series of how the Palo Alto Network Security Operations protects us, our customers, our employees all around the world. In the previous episodes, we have been talking about the extreme volume of threats that the Palo Alto Security Operations deal with, the technology, the practices, and the teams who run it. In this episode, I want to look at how we use artificial intelligence and machine learnings to make sense of things faster, using the capacity of the machine to outsmart attackers. And with me, I have Billy Hewlett, who is interestingly the grandson of Bill Hewlett of the Hewlett Packard Corporation. Billy leads the AI research team at Palo Alto Networks. His team builds machine learning models to stop malware and other cyber activities. And before Palo, uh, Billy, interestingly again, programmed AI to protect video games such as World of Warcraft to protect the, the innocent players from the trolls. <laughs> right, Billy? Did I say that right? Yes. Uh, I mean, the problem was, uh, you know, there's all these uh, stolen World of Warcraft accounts. Uh, this was back when World of Warcraft was a huge thing. And there's all these, these stolen WoW accounts. And so people would log in and get your password. And so they try to figure out, um, is this actually someone legitimately logging in to their normal account? Or is this someone, a stolen account to figure it out? So trying to figure that out using machine learning. <laughs> so that's how all the, all the story started. And uh, what do you do now? Well, now I lead the uh, AI research group. Uh, we, uh, so we're trying to use machine learning, artificial intelligence to protect our customers. So how can we figure out that you know, a file, a, um, a, a web page, uh, a communication, uh, figure out all these things are, are malicious or benign or, or so forth. So that's, I mean, broadly, that's what we do. Mm -hmm. I always wanted to ask you this. Growth is such a positive word. Um, we are growing as a company social networks grow, we grow as individuals, but what is the growth of the dark side? If you look at malware, if you look back maybe 10, 15 years ago and now today, how is malware growing? Yeah, I actually had to look this up, but uh, so in 2012, uh, there was something like 85 million unique malware out there, uh, and now we have more than a billion. So what, more than 10, 15 X in 10 years? Uh, it's growing fast. Tell us some exciting ways of how our products use your inventions. Uh, so I lead the AI research group at Palta Networks, uh, and uh, we build machine learning to try to protect the customer. So imagine that you have a web page, and you're trying to figure out if this web page is phishing. Mm -hmm. uh, you can take the web page, you can look at the, the content that's on the web page, you can look at the image of the web page, you can look at the URL of the web page. All these things will allow you to make a decision to say, this is a phishing page, or this is not a phishing page. And, uh, and this is done with machine learning. If you can imagine that, uh, you know, it would be best if you had an, an expert to look, come look at a page. Uh, but now imagine that you have to do this uh, 50 to 60 million times a day. Um, that's the scale at what we're talking about. So obviously you can't have, you know, you can't have, do that uh, uh, at, at that scale with an expert. So instead you have a machine, you train a machine to do it. Uh, and that's how we, we uh, provide the, the security. As far as I know, every, most attacks start as a phishing. So I can imagine that that's the top of the funnel for an attacker. And maybe a user intelligently can tell from the URL, but a machine who has no idea <laughs> what is supposed to be there doesn't. How do you deal with that problem? Yeah, I mean, I think phishing is really interesting. There's, there's been an evolution of attacks and defenses. So we start off and we're looking at the web page and we're getting the content on the web page and we're getting, you know, the text on the web page says, you know, this is American Express and, you know, you need to give in your password. And so we start off with there and, and we're, we're, we're fine in, in, in detecting that this is, this is a phishing page. Then the attacker starts using JavaScript to make an image of your bank's login page. And, um, the, you know, the thing about, about um, you know, your, your banks is that um, human beings are very good at figuring out what looks like a bank, but they're not very good at figuring out what is actually a bank, mm -hmm. right? Because, you know, it, it, you know, all these things that a bank actually does. But 
And computers are the opposite. Computers are very, very good at figuring out what is a bank. It has very, you know, they're, they're a small number of them. They have very, you know, standard procedures that, you know, they're, we know what Chase Bank is, right? Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's at these particular addresses. Um, and, but it's not very good at figuring out what looks like a bank. Mm-hmm. And so we, we, we said, okay, let's solve this problem. So what we could do is we could take an image of the web page and we could say, does this image, using machine learning, does this image look like a bank's web page? And we have all these different banks and all the, you know, our training set is like, you know, the 10 different Chase login pages and, 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 your, and your Microsoft OWA and your Amazon and all those kind of things. So we have all this training data of like, this is what those look like. Now, if you look like a bank and you're not a bank, well, then we've got you, right? That's, mm-hmm. that's, that's phishing. Mm-hmm. Wow. And, but I presume that for, you're not doing this on the fly. You need to crawl the entire internet to find these pages before, right? And then you maintain a database to say, okay, this wants to look like Chase Bank, but no. Well, so actually, that's very, that's very interesting. So um, again, how we used to do it, how we do it now. So how we used to do it is we, we used to just uh, uh, have a database. So it was actually called PanDB, Palo Alto Networks Database was how we did the, 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 the URL filtering product. And it, what would happen is, is the customer would look up, you know, I'm trying to go to google.com, and it goes from the firewall to the, our cloud, and we say, yeah, google.com is search engines. And so it's like, okay, it's benign, right? Um, and, but uh, the, the problem with that is uh, cloaking. So the attacker now will make a page so that if we go to visit the page from the web, it'll show us some benign content. And if the customer visits the page from their IP address, it looks malicious. So this is called this is called cloaking. Uh, it's gotten so bad there was one where we got a page that said, "Hello, Palo Alto Networks researcher." <laughs> like they had us, they had us stone cold, right? So we so we know that this this, this sort of evasion is going on. So what can we do about it? Um, well, the idea is um, we can move the machine learning from the cloud to the firewall. And so, and, and there's two ways we can do that. Um, one of them is we can actually put the machine learning uh, in the firewall, um, and this was this was in uh, uh, 10.0. Um, and uh, so we can run we can run an ML um, on the firewall on the traffic that's actually going through there. The other thing we can do, and that, this is this is much more recent, is we can figure out okay, this traffic looks a bit odd. It's a bit strange. It's say it's coming from an unregistered or new domain. So what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to forward this traffic to the cloud. We're going to hold this traffic and we're going to forward it to the cloud and we're going to make the we're going to run our advanced ML on it in the cloud and then we're going to let it and assuming it's benign we're going to let it go or we're going to say it's it's block it it's malware. Um, so we can do this sort of at speed. The customer, you know, types in a web page and it loads or it doesn't load because we blocked it. Um, and so this is how we can get around this this cloaking so thinking of all those inventions that you have been creating in the past few years, what are you mostly proud of? I'm most proud of the uh, machine learning and the firewall. So I talked about this a little bit earlier. Um, the idea is we're going to take, uh, we're gonna, before we have all of our machine learning in the cloud, which makes sense that you can have all the resources of the cloud to do it there, um, we're actually going to push it down until uh, it's running on the firewall. Mm-hmm. Um, so how I describe this is, is you have this huge fire hose of data, all this information that's coming from from wildfire, from from uh, um, URL filtering, from all these different places, and we're going to winnow that down and to get a very, very, very tiny model um, that we can run uh, in real time on the firewall, and uh, and this is this model is going to run actually at packet speed. So like. If you imagine a file is broken up into little internet packets, and we're only going to get sort of one internet packet at a time, and it's going to go by, and then we're going to release it, and it's going to go by, and we're going to release it, and it's going to go by, release it, and we're going to say, "Oh, this is malware." You know, we figured out that you know that this stream of back packets we had so far is malware. We don't even get the whole file; we we just get you know pieces at a time, and so. Uh, and figuring out how to do that, uh, and and being you know the first the first the first company to do that, um, that was that was really exciting. Wow, that's why customers need to buy beefy big firewalls to have capacity to run an ML. Is that requiring a lot of uh, power? Are you teaching this model on the firewall? Well, no. the The training goes on in the cloud, right? And the training is actually incredible because we we build a new version of this model every day. Uh, so because the attacks. Are, are changing, right? Um, and so uh, every day we take a, a day's worth of data 
and we train a model on the last uh, two weeks, three weeks of, uh, and so that's what our training set is. And then we, and we also test it on a separate t- t- uh, test set that's, that's for like uh, two months, mm-hmm. right? And so it's a rolling test set. So as the, as the landscape changes, you know, we can imagine you have a production model and you have your model that you're currently building. And at some point, you know, production model is, is steady. So it's sort of steadily, de- it'll decline over time as, as you know, the malware changes mm-hmm. and gets around, and people figure out how to get around it. So then we have our new model, and if our new model is, is you know, epsilon better than our production model, then we flip it. Mm-hmm. So we're, we build a new model every day. We don't change models every day, but we build a new model every day, and every every week or two, we get a new model. It's enough better than, than the previous one. Um, so all that is done in the cloud, um, and then it's served out, to the, the new model is served out to all the firms. Mm-hmm. So you're feeding up all the, all all the training the yes. input to the cloud. That's yes. where you train it, and then... Each of the individual firewalls will get the update. Get the, of the model. Models. Yeah, they'll get the model. Um, so yeah, the training happens. It's a you know huge processes and GPUs and stuff like that, and it's but it gets down to this little model, and then the model is distributed to, to all the all awesome. The, Something to be proud of. Are, are we still detonating files, or we are beyond that? Oh, definitely. Um, so I mentioned in in Wildfire, we have our static classification where we just look at the file. You know, for example, some files we don't need to. There's files where you can you know, you can cryptographically assign them, mm-hmm. right? And so this will be like your Microsoft update, right? And so Microsoft says, you know, cryptographically this is this is a Microsoft update. No one else can claim this is a Microsoft update. Yeah. So for those ones, we don't need to do anything special with it. We can just we can just make sure we verify that it's cryptographically correct. Good. Um, so. And then there's all the static detection where we can say, okay, we, we, this looks like, you know, if this is a couple characters off of a malware one, we're just going to call it malware. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the ones that, that don't, we can do dynamic. So dynamic is where we're going to detonate. So we take the file, we run it uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a, a PU. Uh, we actually do this, again, all over the world. So if, it, if it's coming from EU, we're running it, at, you know, in, in, a, um, in an instance, a GCP instance in, 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 in the EU or AWS instance here and so forth. So we're, we're running these all over the world. We run the file. We see what happens, um, and there's a whole there's a whole bunch of uh, actually, um, this is called the hypervisor. Mm-hmm. So there's this this idea of, are you actually running in a simulation? Mm-hmm. So you know we talk about that in like the matrix and stuff like that, right? But um, in this case, the the computer program is trying you know the malware is trying to figure out, am I actually running in a simulation? And so, and so we have to be very clever of, you know, oh, no, no, you're not running a simulation. This is like <laughs> this real, is real hardware. <laughs> this is real, yeah. You're, Boom. <laughs> you're running on real hardware, right? So we have this like running on real hardware and we have, and so we, so there's another cat and mouse game of, of this, this hypervisor of trying to fool the malware into thinking this is actually, you're running on your target machine. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's like, is this real life? And like, yeah, this is real life. Okay. Okay. So I'll, I'll do my attack then. So you have to convince it that. It's not virtual, mm-hmm. um, that it's real, and then so then it does all of its all of its things. So yes, we do definitely do detonate them all the time. Wow. So so in this example, you're actually running this in a virtual environment, but some would survive because they are smart enough to tell that this is a virtual environment. What happens to with those? I mean, they uh, sure. I mean, if you get, you know, if they get complicated enough, you know, maybe they go and they, um, you know, they check the time. Right. And then they, you know, maybe they try to, maybe they try to go to Google, right? They try to go to Google and they check the time and then they run some process and see how long it goes and then check the time. Like, so there's, there's like very, you know, they get very complicated um, ways, but, but fortunately, um, a lot of times we can detect these, um, just from the evasive steps they're taking. Mm -hmm. So we don't actually necessarily detect the, the malware. Um, we detect, wait a second, they're doing all these evasive things. And, you know, there's only, you know, we have like two things on this benign list that, that actually are allowed to do, you know, that we know do these things. Everyone else who does these things, it, it, that's not a normal thing for a program to do. Acting suspiciously. <laughs> yeah, <Boom. laughs> you're acting suspiciously, <laughs> right, and, and we got you. So um, a lot of times that's that's how we, we, we figure it out. It's, it's, it's a cover-up, not the actual crime that we see sometimes on these. Wow. So you have been doing this for a while at Palo Alto Networks. You joined us 2013, right? 2013, yes. A long time ago. So if you if you can remember back in those days or even before, at uh, looking at the sheer volume of growth and the complexity involved, 
like at what point did it become impossible to find fight against this volume, fight against this complexity, you know, outsmart attackers using human power? I mean, it was starting even then. I mean, when I joined, it was the first uh, ML group. There was two other data scientists at, at Palatine Networks, uh, and uh, one of whom was, is still here. Uh, and uh, and uh, you know, so that was the very beginning. And that, then we were just looking at web pages um, because it's pretty obvious that you know it, it doesn't scale very well. But as I as I mentioned with, with Wildfire, we we start getting we start getting machine learning. We start putting into Wildfire, and now we put machine learning. You know, in DLP, we put put in machine learning in in DNS. We in basically all the different um, uh, product lines. We're have, we're putting machine learning because we have this problem of how do we automate our defenses, and the way we're going to do that, we're not going to have you know super. Ex we have super experts here, but there there's not very many of them in the world, right? So we want to automate their 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 knowledge, their expertise, and put it everywhere, mm. and that's what we use the ML for. Mm. Wow. Do you ever come across machine on the other side? So, we've we've th this is a big thing in academia, which is called adversarial AI, which is like how you use AI to bypass AI, how you use AI to attack AI, adversarial. Um, we don't have proof yet that the attacker is using AI. We have proof that they are using techniques to try to foil our AI, knowing that we're using AI, um, but we don't have evidence yet that. Um, they're actually using AI against our AI. However, the, the pieces are out there. I mean, if you look, there's open source building blocks to do this that are out there. So we're starting to harden our defenses against these kind of attacks. Do you feel prepared when the time comes? I mean, <laughs> uh, I think we're doing what we can. Uh, sometimes you know, it's a tricky thing. Will we trade off? Will we, will we have worse detection right now so that we're better against this hypothetical attacker that's using AI? Probably not. We're not going to make that trade-off until we have evidence. On the other hand, can we get prepared for it? Can we you know, change our, our ways, our training methods and stuff so that we can, we, we can, we're prepared for it when it happens? Yes, we're definitely doing that. All right. Thank you, Billy. And in the next episode, we'll talk about detection engineering and some details of how we use SIEM at Palo Alto Networks. Until then, hasta la vista.